Hi everyone, my name is Dr Matt Williams, I'm a tutor in politics and one is known as the Access Fellow here at Jesus College at the University of Oxford and I'm delighted to be here today with... Hi, my name is Yusuf, I'm a fifth year clinical medical student. Hi, my name is Leo, I'm a first year medical student at Cuba College. In today's video we are going to be talking about how to apply for medical school at Oxford and Cambridge. So Yusuf, what is first? I think firstly is deciding if you want to even apply to Oxford or Cambridge and also to develop your extra reading and supercurriculars, extracurriculars. And the way you can do that is by checking out our previous video that we've recorded about extra reading and supercurriculars that you can also check out. So timeline, Leo, what comes when? Yeah, so uh, I think first of all, to decide if you want to uh, apply to Oxbridge even, it's important to see what this university has to offer. Mm -hmm. And the, the way to do that is go to open days, find out if uh, the, how the culture and university life is like, uh, and uh, go visit there on their open days sometime in June. Um, uh, and if you just do decide to apply to Oxbridge, there's a couple important time points that you need to uh, bear in mind and not miss the deadlines. So I guess first of all is UCAS and it opens uh, quite early and closes uh, for medicine at, uh, in early October. So make sure you have all your materials prepared before that, including uh, personal statement, predictive grades, uh, teacher reference, uh, uh, and go through the whole UCAS checklist. Um, uh, another important thing for medical application is uh, your entry exams. So make sure you, uh, you know when the deadline for registration is and what time is the, uh, the actual exam so that you set a schedule for yourself for revision and do not miss the deadlines. Uh, and finally, interviews uh, sh should be emailed to you about the dates and times and be sure to bear that in mind. So one of the aspects of the application that causes quite a lot of anxiety for students is the admissions tests. Yeah. Yes, sir. tell us more about those. Um, I would say the first thing to also bear in mind is to manage your time and be aware of the date. And you always want to be able to give yourself at least four to six weeks in preparation for the entry exam. So that requires you to be prepared in terms of having your personal statement roughly done so that you're able to first dedicate that time towards the entry exam. It's always about, the gold standard will always be to use the official past papers from their website and those can be really, really good practice to do. And what you really want to ensure that is every single mark you drop from those is a lesson learned. And don't just go back at the marks and be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Actually, okay, let's go through the question. What were the clues that were buried in the question that could actually allow me to then understand how it's linked to the mark scheme? So that's really important and you can create you know, a table or bullet points for all the lessons you've learned that you can go, go through either the night before or the morning of the exam and that can be really useful to do. So ultimately use the same format and the same style as you're going to get in the real thing and the more practice you're able to get the better. We've got the Aspiring Medics YouTube channel which has loads of free videos that you can also check out and resources that you can use in helping you with the entry exam in itself. The third thing I think is also about managing your psychology and bearing in mind that actually it's about going in there with confidence and thinking you know what you've done all these past papers you've done enough work and you're good enough to be able to get through that so I think managing that game day psychology um, and that's really about looking after yourself as well and that's the usual stuff you know when it comes down to lifestyle food water exercise socializing as well to ensure that you're able to be at your best definitely and do check out the aspiring medics youtube channel they've got some great stuff there leo obviously it worked out for you but is there anything that you might have done differently if you had to go again oh yeah absolutely uh, so as yusuf said and i totally agree that planning and psychology is the two most important thing when it comes to exam preparation uh, and so I, I did reasonably well in my BMATs, but for other universities in my UCAT application, I, uh, I stressed out so much that I put a, putting a lot of work on futile practices uh, and it didn't really target my weakness and uh, I think that's what caused my downfall in that exam. So uh, I think a take home message for, uh, for you guys and uh, what I wish I've done differently at the time I was preparing is really to highlight what your weaknesses are uh, from your practice but also just check out the, uh, the, the official uh, syllabus and see uh, what kind of areas you're not understanding fully. Target those areas, put in more work and practice in these weaknesses of yours instead of just practicing in general. Uh, that would be quite a waste of time. So planning and don't let anxiety overcome you let you go into futile practices is my take-home message from here.
Great advice, thank you. So the UCAS form, the University and Colleges Admissions Service form, is the application you send to all of your medical schools, right? What sort of stuff has got to be on there? Yeah, so first of all, uh, your subject choice and your predicted grades is on UCAS. Uh, so make sure you know what uh, the subject requirements for medicine is usually chemistry compulsory and one from mathematics, physics, further maths, and uh, biology. Um, so make sure you have that and understand the subject choice. The second thing on there is going to be personal statement, super important part of your application. Uh, so the personal statement is a 47 line or 1000 word long document about yourself and your uh, activities. Who you are, what you've done, and why you're interested in the degree you're applying to. And that is a super important way to showcase uh, your, 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 yourself, your experience, and uh, why, why are you a good fit for both the university and, um, uh, and, the, and the degree. So it's really important in the personal statement to show how you've developed from uh, things like the supercurricular and extracurricular activities that you've done. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, make sure you go and check out the supercurricular and extracurricular activity video that we uh, posted before. That's fair. Absolutely. And the other thing to mention is alongside your personal statement, your teachers will also write a teacher's reference. And they're quite similar in the sense that both of them want to be focusing on the very medicine selection criteria that Oxford have. And you effectively want to ensure that it's a tick list where you can ensure that each and every single one of those has been done. Preferably, you want them, uh, the teacher's reference to include activities or experiences that you haven't mentioned in your personal statement, either because of the character limit or just because you haven't been able to fully reflect upon them. That can be a really good opportunity to showcase all of your experiences and showcase all of the ways in which you're able to meet the Oxford Medicine Selection Criteria. So interviews, now all medical schools have interviews in the United Kingdom. But Oxford and Cambridge, they can be a little bit different, is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So Oxford interviews are a traditional panel interview compared to a more popular format used in the vast majority of medical schools, which are uh, multiple mini stations or MMIs. Uh, they mostly differ in the focus of the interview, the, the point of the interview, and the formats. So I'll illustrate on both a little bit and explain how, uh, how the format might impact your experiences. In a traditional panel interview, you will have a, a panel of three tutors inter, uh, uh, asking you questions. Uh, one will be, they will take turn to be the main interviewer, and uh, uh, it will mainly be an academic discussion lasting for about half an hour to an hour. Whereas in uh, multiple mini interviews or MMIs, there will be uh, lots of stations that you go around and each station there will be one interviewer ass assessing your performance independently. The, because of the format of MMIs, it is focused more on a holistic overview of your attributes and your ap academic aptitude as well. Uh, whereas in a traditional panel interview in Oxbridge, uh, it is more focused on your academic abilities. It's more of it's it's almost like a mock tutorial where you can have academic discussion with the tutors about uh, anything on medical science and uh, particularly the things you mentioned in personal statement and. Um, um, well, uh, anything they prepared beforehand. Um, but uh, it, it differs because Oxbridge want to assess your, uh, how fit you are, uh, how much you, are, you will benefit from tutorials. Hence, they set up the, this format similar to a tutorial. Whereas, uh, for, the most, uh, for other medical schools, they are more interested in how holistic you are as a, uh, as a person wanting to go into medicine. That's right. Now, at the moment, all of our interviews at Oxford are being conducted online. But Yusuf, you remember the good old days, perhaps, when, <laughs> when they were in person. But do you remember much from your interview? Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, I don't think you can forget it. But um, I think it would be a really um, good opportunity. Um, as Leo said, two ways. One, to find out if um, Oxford is for you, but also if you're right for Oxford. And ultimately, the tutorials, um, the interviews themselves are a mock tutorial. And usually, they are going through either first year uh, level content or a conundrum. And they're trying to see how well you're able to problem solve and how well you're able to think on your feet.
they are not expecting you to know the answer. In fact, they purposefully go for questions that they don't know the answer to um, and that you're, you won't know the answer to. So they're trying to see how you can think and how, if by giving bits of information, you're able to connect the dots together. For example, this could be really useful when it's looking at, say, what Oxford Love is a question about medical research or about how to design an experiment. And that could be a really, really good opportunity in which you're able to um, integrate your understanding, for example. It might be on uh, the effect of Diet Coke on obesity and then think about how would you run a trial? Would it be double blind? Would it be observational? What would be the problems of one or the other? So it's really seeing how you can think. So decisions on whether or not you have been offered a place will be released in January, typically. Now, Leo, do you recall opening that email? Oh yeah, I, I don't think you can ever forget <laughs> that either. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was completely not expecting to uh, being offered the place, so uh, I, I was really overwhelmed with joy at that, at that moment. Um, but, the, but the one thing is that if even if you're not uh, offered a place, uh, it's okay, it's not the end of the world. And um, uh, I don't think uh, at that point you should be worried about uh, if you're offered at the University of Oxford or Cambridge, because after all, uh, that, is all that is still within the interview timeline, and you should be more focused into getting yourself into medicine, even if it's at other universities. Right. Yeah. What What would you say to someone who said they weren't admitted? Yeah, I would say to remember that you know there's more to you than just your Oxford application, and that actually I've got so many of my friends that um, you know who were rejected um, by Oxford, but now are you know absolutely loving medical school elsewhere. So I think it's important to remember that. There are different styles of medicine and there are different teaching styles and Oxford isn't the end of one be all and you can absolutely thrive at a different university and you can also make a decision if you want to then reapply the next year for example or if you want to then try again in a different year so I'd say it can definitely be quite difficult especially at the start when you're receiving it because you're like oh that's a bit rubbish but actually I think be able to give yourself time to process that and if you want to you can also reapply the next year. So thank you so much to Yusuf and Leo for this video and thank you for watching. Do make sure you check out the Aspiring Medics, they've got loads more fantastic content over there so check it out. Top, final top tip Leo? Yeah, so just remember medicine, applying to it is because you're passionate about it. So don't be too overwhelmed by stress when you're doing it. Enjoy the process, that's my take home message. Great advice. I think mine would always be consistency and habits and build those habits, feed your intellectual curiosity and the more you can make it as easy as possible for you by subscribing or by following different YouTube channels, the easier that's going to be for you. Bad. Yeah. Very good advice. See you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. Bye.